out there, pool fans. Welcome to the Simonis Aramith Arena and the 2019 International Nine Ball Open. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Sheraton Norfolk Waterside Hotel is once again our host venue, and Diamond Billiard Products is once again providing the official table of the 2019 International Nine Ball Open. Uh, we're halfway through the uh, afternoon session here on the third day of our six-day event. We have winter side action coming up for you momentarily, and we're pleased to bring it to you. We'll have one more match after this, then a dinner break, and we'll be back at 6.30 tonight for three more rounds. So with that being said, it's time to meet the players. And you know, I normally tell you the player has this title and that title and so forth and so on, and... We could do that, but we don't have enough time for both of these gentlemen. But what I'd like to do just briefly is give you a quick synopsis of what kind of an impact these two gentlemen have had on our game in the last 15 to 20 years. Between them, they've got five Derby City nine ball titles. They've got seven Turning Stone titles. They've got seven Billiards Digest Player of the Year awards. They've appeared on the Moscone Cup of combined 27 times. And last but certainly not least, between them, they hold seven U.S. Open nine ball championships. And there's only been 43 of those. That means like every six years, one of these guys wins. That's just a sampling. We're going to see some more great play coming up momentarily. So let me introduce first, representing the United States, sponsored by Q-Tech, the South Dakota kid, Shane Van Boning. And from Finland, Finland, sponsored by Mez Q's, 2014 inductee into the Billiard Congress of America Hall of Fame, the Iceman, Mika Imminent. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Go ahead and lag for the break if you would. The timekeeper is John Baker, and I'm going to send it upstairs to the A team to Mark Wilson and our own five time Hall of Famer, Danny DiLiberto. Go ahead, Mark. I hope that everyone is ready for world-class nine ball because that's what's happening here. Mark Wilson and Danny Dilberto here in Norfolk. And Danny, tell us your pre-match thoughts. Well, these are two previous winners of, of the U.S. Open. And Mika is from Helsinki, Finland. And he came to New York because of pool. You know, more action, more playing, and it worked because he's a great player. And we know about Shane. And Shane is self-thought. He, he, I, quit, I had an interview with him, and I said, how did you learn how to play that well in Sioux Falls? He said, by myself, he did it alone, but he has a family that plays pool. I'm in the pocket of the ball and made a compliant break, but he's going to push out. Interesting rules here this week. Nine balls racked on the spot. Three balls must cross the head string to make it a legal break. The nine ball does count on the break. That's a good hit there. Eminem then had to re, uh, expose himself to some risk with that difficult safety play, but he didn't dare push out to anything that was easier than that for Shane Van Boning. Yeah, Shane's uncertain about what he wants to do here. I cannot tell if he can hit the edge of the two, but it doesn't appear that he can. We're also yeah, I, using. I think he could hit it, but what are you going to do hitting it? You got to do something constructive. He looks like he can hit it. Might have a billiard if he hits it. Did he get a rail? Boy, what a oh, shot. He broke what the a shot. That, that's as powerful of a shot from that range at that speed as making a long straight in and drawing it all the way back in terms of the difficulty. 
everything's you got to hit the ball exactly right to judge the speed to get that oh, to look lodge at this there. is a tough kick when the cue ball's this close but he hit it Mika is a fast player too he will not dawdle over his shots he's kind of a rhythm tempo type of a guy he has a uh, a powerful offense he's a former two-time winner of the US Open two consecutive years Shane Van Boning won the US Open five times Amazing. The only other man to do that, Earl Strickland. Beautiful hit. Rubs the nine open. <laughs> that, that was a very productive shot. Yeah, and there's no more problems here. Mika always uh, already shaking his head side to side. If Mika had an issue, I would say sometimes his attitude will beat him. He gets disappointed with the outcome of the balls and it seems to affect him emotionally yeah but I think that it just creates fire in him also I don't think he does it because he's a poor sport I think he fires himself up uh, that's a great point and I, I happen to agree with you after watching him for many years that he, he feeds a little bit off of negative energy and the great buddy Hall one time told me he said you know Mark to be really a winner in this sport, you got to learn to play with a little bit of hate. And, <laughs> well, well, he didn't mean hate your opponent. He meant hate I, to lose. I know what you mean. Okay. Van Boning fell just a little conservative here, a little thinner than maybe would be comfortable for most. Should not be a big issue. Look at that speed. It's going to not make the ball. Hit it heavy. It's starting to hang up. Well, he, Table wore out a little. He did. Just that, just a bit. Yeah, but I, I say Monday, that same hit would have gone in. Right. But the table's wearing a little. I don't know the physics dynamic, but it seems when you cut balls thin and you hit them slower, there's a little more grab, like you have to cut them a little oh, bit thinner. Oh, definitely, yeah. Okay. You're right, Mark. You were right last year once. <laughs> Well, big power draw that did not quite reach. And now if Mika decides to play this cross side, which I anticipate that he will, it's a oh, all or nothing bet. You think so? I think I, Mika does not like to go down playing safe. So I, I do think he'll go for this. Yeah, he'll go for his wallet too. Well, he didn't absolutely give it away. This, uh, he's bridged over the nine ball now. We are playing all ball fouls, too. Yeah, I didn't really think he'd shoot that. But it's early in the match. You could take a few chances early, but don't do it when it's like the guy's on the hill. <laughs> Might have changed. What a smooth cueing action there under a tough shot. And uh, I don't agree with that assessment, take chances early, because the games at the beginning count just as much as the ones at the end, and sometimes you'll wish you hadn't given away a couple games. I think you should play every game like it's Hill Hill. No, you're right about that, but I, I'm doing it for the fans. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm guilty of doing what you said that you could do, thinking the same, and then later lamenting and regretting and learning you have well, to play I every game. Well, I came with a good excuse. No, yes, you did. And if you're going to be a top American player, you can never be responsible for your own behavior. <laughs> Always blame someone else on excuses. You're right. Okay, a little bit of a messy opening rack. Van Boning now leads 1-0. Danny and I came in the booth. We both agreed that we love pool. We couldn't be more excited. It's going to be one great match after the other throughout the day. Here you have Van well, Boning and Eminem. Well, I know you got a job. See, I like it because it kept me out of work for all these years. <laughs> oh, so pool is at work, okay. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Next up on this table, we got Jason Shaw coming on. <laughs> yeah, he's displaying firepower supreme. Outer table action. There's matches going everywhere. And, and the quality is equal to the center court table, too, by the way. It's, not like there's chopped liver on the outside. 96 of the greatest players on earth assembled here at the Sheraton well, Waterside in Norfolk. I saw Shane practice earlier. He made the ball in the side every time. So I expect him to make the one in the side. 
he's clearly the best breaker in the business, but that's yeah. because he works on it so hard. Oh, he missed it. Well, I got him. Two ball chicks into the side. Oh, yeah, that's good a good thing cool. it did. And look at the one ball right next. To, this is the patented uh, Shane Van Boning offense. He generates it from the break. First day I arrived here, I came over here. We had the player meeting. I looked out. Shane Van Boning was hitting balls here. I later went to Q Master Billiards. Shane was over there hitting balls when I arrived. Four hours later when I left, he was still hitting balls. He came here to win this tournament. Well, he won the first one he played in, and I saw him four in the morning hitting balls. But he was a young man, and it was big prize money, and he held up so well. Great player. Serious dude. And he loves the pool. Where are you going, cue ball? Oh, it stopped just right. Oh, he's shaking his head. He doesn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> well, he's just shaking. He was afraid because that last inch or two, it's out of his control. So, You know, there's nothing more endearing for me than someone that works at their craft as hard as Shane Van Boning does. So right there, I'm a fan. Anyone puts that type of hours into it. Well, that's why he's got great results. He's been the best American player since he showed up. One time we were doing a broadcast, and it was his first time to get into the TV round. Uh, the, he, he made it to the final match on ESPN. I asked him how a young guy like him would celebrate it, and he told me that he was going to the pool room to hit balls. <laughs> I believe it, of it, course. Right. Well, he's just more comfortable doing that. That's his life. He's invested every molecule of his body is all about playing great pool. And it's been good to him, but only because of the work. And after a little bit messy first rack, Van Boning won that and now plays a very clean break and run out. One or two zeros are score. There are some players here just playing at the absolute pinnacle of their powers. Darren Appleton's won. He's cruised through this field so far. J.L. Chang played great. Dennis Arcolo played a great set here yesterday. Well, what you're saying, it's still tough to pick the winner because we got a lot of killers left, including killer di filler. <laughs> yes, and J.L. Chang, our defending player uh, champion. And we got a couple Greek players that are playing pretty good. Economopoulos and Alex Kazakis. Yeah. Kazakis ran nine twice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's pretty tough <laughs> yeah. to beat. And you're not the absolute cinch favorite to win this thing either just because you did that. That's how strong the field oh, is. Oh, no. No. Okay, here's our second look at Van Boning's break. There it is. A lot of action on the nine ball. The cue ball's going. Oh, he don't like that. But, it, you know, it didn't go right in. It got hit. And that's the deal with the cut break. You know, you take some risk doing that. You can see the ball action that he had. He can tell you where to hit it. He can show you where to hit it. But you can't hit it that good because you don't practice it enough. Here's our predator replay. No, not quite yet. Okay. Eminem cruises around the three ball to get a nice little angle here. Oh, that was a little weak. Oh, he doesn't have a gimme here. No problem for him. Gonna stop on the 50 yard line. That's what happens when you get out of line one ball. It's tough to get back in line. No problem. 
our years of broadcasting Eminem, it almost seems like he does a little bit better when he's out of line, like he concentrates harder or something. He's just familiar with being a shot maker. Well, he has to because he likes eating. And he's amphibious. Left-handed shot. Routine eight and nine ball to get a game on his side of the ledger. Resets himself here, make sure he gets this nine ball down. Eminem one, Van Boning two. Get another look at the Predator replay here on the break. Look at the action there. There goes the cue ball. Interesting match on the outer table with Sky Woodward versus Max Eberle. <coughs> Sky is already on this year's Moscone Cup team, and Max Eberle is fighting against Corey Duell to see who gets selected for the final spot. Well, that match, they're on the loser side, so the winner could, I mean, the loser could pack his bags. Skyler beat a uh, pretty good Earl Strickland last night, 11 to 9 here on the TV table late. One ball dunked in the side, but it's going to be a non-compliant break. And by non-compliant, what that means for those that have not been following this is that three balls must cross the head string. Each ball that you pocket means one less ball must go across the head string. If you pocket two balls on the break, that eliminates all those restrictions. In the circumstance of a non-compliant break, the incoming player can either accept the table as is or pass it back. There is no push out available. Shane's looking at playing a very tough combination, 2-8, or maybe a bank, or maybe a safety. He's still analyzing and weighing his options. I like the bank. Shane does not want to pass it back. He does not like this opportunity uh, by itself, but he doesn't want to let Mika shoot. Either. He's banking it. Maybe. He's banking it, but not right away. <clears throat> <clears throat> Almost like, like a four-rail safety here. Bank it straight forward, punch the cue ball forward, and let the two ball come down underneath the five. You don't have to expose yeah, forget yourself. Forget about that idea. <laughs> Just saying, if you don't want to play the bank. I, you're that's right, the, but he, I think he made his mind up right away to play the bank. He sure made it straight in. Hit it pure. Must be fun to play pool with that degree of confidence and ability. He's got just a hint of an angle here. He wants to see how he might rub the nine. And really, how thick or thin you hit the nine has to do with how the four hits the side pocket. Chooses a very soft speed. Lightly grazed the nine ball, but had no uh, impact on the outcome of the shot. The transfer from the six to the seven is the last potential stumbling block. He kind of points towards the center of the tables where he'd like to cue ball. Yeah, he does need an angle to get from the six to the seven. Wow, that was risky. But he's fine now. <clears throat> Good shot there. At the heart of the pocket. That's why his speed control is good. It's not rattling into the pocket. It's hitting the heart of the pocket. And allows for very tight speed control and precise angles.
amateurs are just glad to get the ball down. These pros are hitting particular parts of the pocket to make it work. I think he was a bar table player to start with. Both players trade racks from their own break. 3-1 Van Boning. Playing on four and three eighths inch pockets here. And as Danny alluded to, the tables are starting to get a little broke in. So balls sliding in lightly off the rail near the pocket is gonna quit happening. I'll tell you something about Shane. He started playing one pocket and he learned real quick. A lot of talent there. Oh, his execution's so good. Yeah, his brain is pretty good. Okay, here we go. Big, powerful blow One about to be side. levied. There it is. He's got that down, Pat. Well, it's going to be a, did he make two? He needs a three to cross the line. It did not. Non-compliant break. <laughs> as hard as he hit them, Danny, and this is where I object. Made the ball he's supposed to be making. But, but anyway, that is the rules we're playing, so there's no sense belaboring that. You're right. I think as long as you make a ball, you should continue to shoot. Now, Mika's a shooter, but he would have a pretty routine safe if he just wanted to roll up on the two and just let the cue ball kind of filter off the cushion. And he doesn't the have to accept this, right? He could. Right, look. that's true, but yeah. Yeah, that's the shot I was describing. Great. Just don't, there's no sense forcing the issue on a tough two ball and giving Shane an open layout. Shane's going to try to jump this. Oh, pretty close to the balls. This is a tough jump. I agree. Be a beautiful shot. Steep angle on the cue to get it up right away. Not a certainty. Needs a good follow through here. Oh. oh with control, too. Perfect. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, there's world-class nine ball right there. And Mika's got to be disappointed. Now he's thinking maybe I should have just cut the two ball down the rail. Yeah, he should have did anything. <laughs> Don't listen to Wilson up in the booth, for God's sakes. He told me to play safe. <laughs> well, you'll have to be playing someone of this stature to have them make a shot like that with the degree of control to get position, too. Danny always mentions the fact that he can't believe how long Shane stayed on top. Right. Because it's one thing to get to the top, but it's quite another to stay on top. I always say it. How does it keep his intensity, especially winning tournaments, you know what I mean? I was kind of lazy. If I won a tournament, next tournament, I stunk. Really, he keeps the intensity... He just gets better every year, and we we're always amazed, you know. And but he's not the only one. There's a yeah. He better get better with the field getting better. When you've had that degree of success, the targets on your back, it's a bullseye, and everybody wants to say, "Hey, I beat the guy that won five U.S. Opens." Well, Archer gave him a, a little bit of a kick. Yeah, he did. That was a good, tough match. Look at Shane, fell short. He's disappointed. <laughs> kind of a wry smile of 
Look what I did to myself. Now I got to be a shop maker. Well, would you, you rather cut it or bank it? Definitely. I think he's cutting it. Well, he's definitely cutting it. Oh, a nice clean hit there. Good speed. Yeah. <laughs> Big horse <laughs> coming on through. Four to one will be our score. And Van Boning. Uh -huh. Must be great to, to be considering struggling and then have to make a cut shot and just whistle it on home there. Once he gets dialed in, he won't even have to make shots of that difficulty level very often. Yeah, that is amazing. Does it over and over. He's just a hard worker. And and that's what really, you know, people want to allude to natural ability meaning something. It means nothing without work. You're right. That's the same in every sport. Forget the talent if you don't work hard. Another thing that's very endearing about Shane Van Boning is that for as great of a pool player he is, he's a better human being. Oh, he is a nice guy. He well, it's not nice guy, but he will. You know, he has morals and ethics. Uh, I've seen him call a foul on himself, Hill Hill, before when nobody saw it. And, and but doesn't that so. make him a nice guy? Yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying it's greater than that. A lot of people are nice guys. Especially if you make the one on the break every time. <laughs> that good break. Yeah. He does not have a very good uh, shot on the two, however. He doesn't. It doesn't pass. But I imagine he'll do something right. Uh, he's got the opportunity to control the table. That's powerful to begin with. He'd rather have the opportunity to play offense, but anyway, he has a chance to do something here. To... He's not going to shoot the combination. No. He's no, going to no. bank this toward the three, I hope. He's playing safe somehow. He's determining just how he's going to play safe here. We'd love to get in a predicament where Mika had the kick. Well, distance will help, too. I think he can bank this towards the three, the long way. He might even snooker him. No, you didn't want to do that, but he did pretty well. Oh, fantastic shot. Yeah, Meek is handcuffed. The two is right near the rail. It's a very difficult ball to kick at. I mean, yeah, I don't think he could have possibly come out of this any better. Oh, maybe he can just, oh, he's going to just take a foul. Okay. That's how good he did. It forced Mika to take a foul. Try to tie up the two. It, and that was a great idea because he, he really had Mika in a place where there's just not going to be able to win playing any other shot. Best you can do is try to tangle something up and get yourself back to the table. This is an interesting little shot right here. To play position on the secondary object ball, you will sometimes see a guy play this with follow, and then as the two cuts the seven into the pocket, the two ball comes off the rail, the cue ball comes forward and connects with it again, double kissing it forward lightly. And otherwise, it's, it, this is that tricky shot that's sometimes hard to play position on the secondary object ball. Yeah, it's going to bank. He'll have the two inside somewhere if he makes this. No, I think it, I think that's why he's going to play it with follow, to double kiss it forward rather than take the risk of that going into the side. Looks to be that right angle for this shot. No. No, he didn't double kiss it. Oh, he did. It did kissed he? again. Did he? Yeah. Okay. But I don't think it benefited him. No, it looks really, well, the cue ball ended up on the rail. So it took some of the pace out of the cue ball. Now this is murder to get back down table. Not well, to, I think he would have to bank it to do that. 
And the angle for the bank is such you'd have to hit it so heavy even at that. He banked it, caught the kiss. And got a break. So far. Yeah, Mika's <clears throat> right not happy. This is that end game scenario. And I don't know if we can get the overhead, but if we do have a moment to get the overhead, yes. You want to fire the bank all the way back down here and bring that cue ball this fashion here. If you miss, you want that two ball to clear and come back down this direction and get separation at least. Nope, playing safe. Oh, that's a good decision. And a good safe. Wow, <laughs> what a shot. Look where put the cue ball. Yeah, a little wisdom there rather than just go all out. Tough ball to hit. Yeah, Shane's disappointed because he got Mika in a position where he had to take an intentional foul and didn't cash that in. And now he's the big underdog in this rack from how well Mika just played that defensive shot. He's kicking one rail at it. Probably will hit it. I think it's multiple rail, right? yeah. Oh, he didn't hit it. Boy, I thought he'd hit that one. Well, Mika got rewarded. Mm-hmm. Pretty interesting how much the crowd has grown since Monday. <laughs> the TV arena, much more full today. And last night for the Strickland match, it was absolutely capacity at 1 in the morning. Saturday night, you won't be able to get a seat. Yeah, it'll definitely be overflow. Make it pounded the cue ball up on the off the end rail, but he got just a little bit thin on the four. That's certainly manageable for a shot oh, maker yeah. of his caliber. But especially he's this close to the ball. No problem here, I don't think. Yeah, you know, good speed. Got the right angle to go from the five to the six. No problem. Now he's got the right angle to get from the six to the eight. Just trails the cue ball forward. No reason to fight with it to get it off the cushion. Just let it go forward, play this in the side. All right, well played. And uh, a great safety by him, and then captures his second game. Yeah, and he got rewarded for it. I like his shirt, too. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful Colorful. shirt. It is. Honoring his home country, Finland. Oh, what this, look at this matchup. It's Copenhagen and Torsten Holman. Three to one for someone. Not sure who. Okay, let's see what Mika can do from the break here. Trying to play the one on the side. He Did made so. It. Two ball got kissed, hung up down on the far end of the table. So looks like we're going to have, well, I, just, I guess he, oh, a non compliant break. Oh. Not at all. Didn't come uh, close. Yeah. Clearly disappointed. Shane going to cut at this, Nanny? I think so. 
Yeah, the cue ball's going to fly around, but he's got a shot if he makes it. Okay. He's going to have another tough shot. Oh, he overcut it. No, he didn't cut it at all. No, he overcut it. He, he just, overcut it. Yeah. Cue ball went in the side, and Shane's thinking, how could he get past the four into the side? Well, Mika's in the match. Runs out here. He's only one game behind. Holman is in front of Copigny, four to one. Yeah, for a while with Thorsten Holman, Pat and I thought he was the best straight pool player. Well, you couldn't possibly be far wrong. No, <laughs> so. it wasn't. The way it was playing. Multi-time world champion straight pool player. A little bit uh, wrong side to Eminem. He recognized it right off. He's got to hit rails, but he'll do it. Mm-hmm. One rail. Maybe two. All right. No, he didn't do it. Well, he didn't do it. Can't get that one back. It's a shame. Well, there's no bargain here. No. And while we know that he's capable of executing that shot, it's the, the issue is that the more times you expose yourself to have to shoot it, it diminishes your consistency. So, sure, he can do it. But you just don't want to be on that line, the wrong line, very often. Oh, so he went be a the little... long way, but he didn't get there quite. What do you do here, Mark? You cut at it or you play safe? I truly think that he'll cut at it. These guys do not like to play safe because the adversary can make a bank or something. They tend to, if it's if it's a close call, they tend to go down shooting. But boy, Especially this is, mentally when you look like you've lost and you get a chance. This is a super tough cut shot, and he's queuing up fast enough. I think he might be playing safe. Nope. Offense. No problem. Golly. Look at the speed. Wow. No, he gra didn't even graze the rail going in. It was hit the heart of the pocket. All right, Van Boning. <laughs> Happy to capture that game. Expands his lead by three racks here, five to two. That was a great shot. Been a fun and entertaining match thus far. You're, you come to the table, you're playing great, but then when you're up against a, another guy that's playing equally great, you don't get that many starts. So now you start to feel a little bit like I'm not playing as loose as I was or I'm struggling a little bit, but actually it's the quality of your opposition that makes you feel that way. Both these players can make all the shots. And it was an unforced error there in that rack. One, uh, Eminem could have played a better angle on the seven ball. He failed that and then supported it with a bad shot. He kind of forced it in a hurry, and overcut the pocket. The shot that you would never expect him to miss because it's an open ball from mid-range. And he was close enough to it to hit it good. That's the other way to say it. All right, let's see what Big Horse can do here. Powerful break. Watch the ball action here. One in the side. He's got that down pat. I know he does. Oh. And the cue ball, too. <laughs> but like you say, that can happen when you're cutting the head ball. Yeah, that's what happens when you're playing the one on the side is that the cue ball gets hot. It came back through the rack, hit the nine ball, sent the nine ball towards the corner. But that angle also produces. There's the replay. Caught me off guard. And that was... Okay. All 
there, right? Well, Mika, you got to get out here. Good shot. Played purposefully to come around three rails here. No, maybe not, because he looks a little... Well, I he might he... have to go one rail now. No, I think he'll do what you said. Well, one rail's a little easier <laughs> speed. I think, well, the angle was a little flat. Now he's got this little bit back cut. Shouldn't be a problem. He'll just play the nine ball to the other corner pocket. And Eminem takes advantage of the scratch on the break by Van Boning. Picks up his third win. Three to five. Here's our TPAs. 861 Eminem, 822 Van Boning. Last night we had Albin Ocean playing on the TV table and post up a huge number uh, TPA-wise. It was right at 9.30. Just played just about flawless. Yeah, he plays good. <laughs> He's really playing well. He wasn't selected for the European Moscone Cup team, and I say uh, if they don't want him, we'll take him. And he's got a sister that's one of the top women players. Jasmine. Okay. Nice break there. Just missed the one inside. He didn't make anything. We got that done. It's all good. Pretty good. He got yeah. just the right angle. Good starter shot there to open up this rack. Checking to see what the score is on the five and the seven down there. It looks like a dead combination. It looks Mark. a little high. I don't know if they're frozen. Well, he doesn't have to play the combination. And he's not playing for that. He's wanted to get this angle where he can play the four and the five in the same pocket. He's looking at that. A little bit straight, but he'll have to power up. But his, that's one thing Van Boning does have is a powerful stroke when it comes to forcing angles. That requires some length, and you got to play a lot of pool to be accurate when you add power. Oh, it was much cleaner than I thought. He didn't have to power up. That was just medium speed. Perfect. He floated in there pretty nice. Beautiful. He really solved a lot of problems by getting the right angle on the five ball there because if he has to run into the seven, things get awkward quite quickly. And he got the right angle on the six, too. Yeah, 
That's what it's about, folks. The right angles. It's got that, too. When you play someone that's been such a consistent performer over the years that adds pressure as you fall behind <laughs> in the match. It's got pressure when you start even. But it adds to it. All right, Van Boning six, him and then three. Nice run out. Well, hello everybody at Classic Q in Depew. Dave. And Rick. And Rick. <laughs> oh, you know that already. I heard that, yes. There's new owners, <laughs> and it's the best room in Western New York. We got food, we got drink and good people. Well, look at Shane, he looks like he's losing. <laughs> Got a poker face. Yeah, well, he's playing 852 and he's never satisfied. He wants something north of 900. 850's pro, 900's world class. It's hard to do, however. Well, he didn't make it in the side once. He made something. Certainly a compliant break. There was plenty of balls on the other end of the table. In fact, there's only three balls left on the breaking end of the table. Long, tough get on the one. Open pocket, however. Yeah, there's a lot of work to this rack. Very smooth cueing action. Hit the heart of the pocket. A great speed. Weak. Great speed. Oh, great. Great. I thought it was too weak to start with, but... But instead, it was almost perfect. Looking at the angle he wants to get between the seven and eight to get the five off the four. Not going to be easy to uh, obtain. No, and he's still got to get to the four when he does that. Right. And then even from the five to get to the six, buried beneath the nine. So there's a lot to go on here. This will be a tremendous run out. Boy, that was a pretty good attempt to get the right angle. It looks like he fell just a little bit straight. Yeah, he doesn't like it, of course. Nope. He's almost going to have to use draw to get the cue ball back to the center of the table to have any chance to run out because if he tries to settle for the five ball from just moving the cue ball slightly forward, it would be murder to get back down onto the six. Especially where the, what is that? The six ball is in the way. You're going to try to draw it out here to the middle. Man, that was a good shot. Oh, wow. Perfect. What a shot that was. <laughs> but still right tough. Angle. Look yeah. at this. Still tough. Yeah, and the, the five is, you know, about a ball and a half width off the rail. So trying to play the cue ball off the top side of the seven is, is super tough. That's, it's not really even an option. Looks like he's powering up. He did. Look at that shot. Look at that shot. Yeah, There's your predator replay right there. <laughs> what a shot that was to force that angle like that with that. Uh, it wasn't thin. It was not thin at all. Oh, good job here.
He falls just a little odd, but the cue ball wants to settle on the rails. He draws back here to get close to the nine. He'll handle it. <laughs> he, well, he just wants to take a time to get his mind set for that's what he's preparing to do. He might play the cue ball near the side pocket to try to be able to hit a little bit lower on the cue ball rather than let it lodge right on the rail. I think that's what he tried to do. Or maybe he was just trying to force it away at that speed. And this is that medium range, tough shot. And a lot of times people think win or lose on this shot. You still have to play the position. I love what he's doing here. Not in a hurry. Going to towel off. Going to get ready to make one quality stroke. This would be the run out of the match right here. There was a lot going on in this rack. And he'd hate to let this nine ball escape. And then plus it's a big uh, difference in the score too. Because if he misses this and gives away the game at 6-4 instead of 7-3. Shane kind of knows this is sort of a pivotal moment in this bid to win the match all, all together. Very still with his head. Watch his elbow there. See how smooth the transition is from backswing to forswing. So <laughs> Clyde's at home, no problem. 7-3, love that run out. That is world-class pool, and that's yeah. worth driving over here from St. Louis. I was St. having Lewis. lunch with him one time, and I said, Shane, all the years playing, I think you're the best player I ever saw. He, went, he modestly denied it, <laughs> and he is. I don't know any player in my career that played better than him. Nor I. Shane would love to push the margin here after that great run out to maybe smash him, make two balls on the break, and get a shot. All right, hey, we get another look. Look at this shot. For those of you at home that don't understand, that's why the, he hit that hard, but look how little pace was left on the cue ball because that object ball was a ball and a half width from the cushion, so it was not just a thin cut to get that. Good care with the aim there on the break. Here we go. One flew right in the side. It's a compliant break. Two it ball is. trying to check up by the side, but no, no shot. None at all. Shane must now make some decisions as to how he would like to push out or proceed with the rack. I don't think a jump is available. Well, he's shaking his head. He doesn't like it. Of course, how could you? Right. But you got to tie up a ball before you push. If you could. I don't see any real tie-up. Well, he's got something in mind there. Of course. He's playing poker right now. Mika didn't go for it, of course. Oh, look at this, the hop shot. Got over it. And Got separation. I don't know if he did or didn't. Yeah, maybe he did. That he snookered a, him. That was a great outcome there. <laughs> nice, 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 nice attempt. Was able to work the cue ball back Beautiful. for distance and then got the nine ball introduced. This is all by design. Doesn't have to work out that way because it's relative to how thick or thin and minutely that you hit that two ball, but he gave himself a chance. Mika's gonna hop now. Oh, look at that. Okay. Yeah, you know, Mika picks up a little bit of a 
good fortune. Thin cut on the three now. Yeah, you know, he didn't give up. It's an O-O. Well, he snuckered himself. I don't know if he did or didn't. He certainly I got very flat on it. Oh, wait, yeah. He's shooting. So he must not be. It wasn't an I take that O-O back. Yeah, that would have been a real spirit breaker had he fallen behind the nine. At this perfect speed, at this skill set between these two guys, a three-game lead is just virtually just one or maybe two innings, but a five-game lead is a little bit of a lead at the elite level. 7-4 is our score. Nice run out there. Eight eighty-four for Eminem, eight seventy-seven on the TPA for Van Boning. Pretty high-level stuff here. Bamboni made a great push out, a great hit on the jump shot. Then Eminen returned the jump shot, found the bottom of the pocket with the two ball, and then was able to turn that into a, convert it into a win. This is one inning, world-class nine ball. What one inning means doesn't mean every game ends in one inning. It means the first player to get the first good shot goes ahead and wins the game. We have a great venue here we're participating in this week. One ball found the pocket. The nine ball got hot. Looks like the five ball found the pocket. Now it's imminent. You know, it looks like he is tangled up on the seven. He's he looks skyward. Yeah, he doesn't have anything. No, he's unhappy about it, which I understand. Now he's got to go into a tactical battle with Shane Van Boning to try to get back to the table. He would have loved to have a shot where he could play without. Okay. Now Shane has the opportunity to shoot or pass it back. Well, he's thinking right now, do I pass it back? Does him, does him and then have a shot? Does he have a bank? It's not a bank. No, he's going to have to play safe unless he is feeling suicidal. I think Eminem is going to try to put the two ball on the end rail just past the seven. I don't really see much else that he could do. And what that means is it would be hard to hide the cue ball with this shot, but just try to buy yourself one more turn at the table later in the rack. That would be success from here. Whatever he chooses to do, there's not a right or wrong. He's just in a bad spot and he has to play. He's going to go thin off the height. No, he, oh, he tried to play it. Okay. Oh, that's a bad shot. Yeah. A little bit too, a little bit too difficult of a shot to play. He was trying to score. You know, that would be like a in basketball. That would be like more than a three-point shot. Perfect. Look that's, at that shot. Well, that's the kind of pressure that degree of consistency that Van Boning puts on you is that you sometimes try to supersede things that percentage-wise are reasonable in an effort to try to claim a quick game or two, get back in this match. In so doing, you end up giving away a game or two. Yeah, I don't like the attempt he made on the two. I liked your first choice 
banking the two rails behind the seven. However, he wanted to make he wanted to win a game. Right, he was trying to force the offense there a little bit prematurely. That being said, even if he gets safe, he's probably going to leave a bank, and if Pamboni makes the bank, then he wishes he would have shot, and I can certainly see his dilemma. Yeah, but you can second-guess that it was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after the fact, we can certainly second-guess whatever. But right now, he's just hoping that Van Boning doesn't translate this into more than one game. Eight four is our score. And Van Boning creeping up near the nine hundred mark. Eight eighty seven now. Eberly in front of Skylar Woodward, six to four. How's Big Cole doing? I'm looking right. Oh, oh, Holman just hung up the eight. So I'll be able to tell you momentarily. It looks like it might be five three Holman, but I couldn't swear to it. All right. Here comes SVB with the powerful break. Well, there's the one the ball. Side. Here comes the side and pocket the with the ball. cue ball. That's what you always say. When you got to cut the head ball to make that inside, the cue ball could go anywhere, and especially on the bottom of the table. Okay, I'll be able to now update the score. It is Big Co. 4, Torsten Holman 5. Uh, wrong side imminent yeah. <laughs> once again. <laughs> Falls a little tough short to get to the eight. Might draw it one rail, but I don't know. The nine might be in the way of all that. No, not with that stroke. Mm -hmm. Good Hit shot. That good. Good recovery. Perfect two cushion position, allowing the cue ball to trail right at the nine. Speed control then becomes much less of an issue. Wins the game from that scratch on the break by Van Boning and now trails by three games at eight to five.
There's the rack track, folks. Mika has not strung any games. Can't beat a guy like this one game at a time. Made the one in the side. I don't think it's going to be compliant. And his cue ball uh, was sailing to the side pocket and got kissed out at the last moment, too. And clearly disappointed. Yeah, but like you've been saying, when you're playing a guy like this, you're not going to get any gifts. you got to beat him. He's not going to miss the rest of this rack. Yeah, you can't bet on that, that's for sure. It's rare. It's a nice hit there. Two cushions. Very pure pocketing. Now we're going to see a draw stroke. I believe he can draw right back, get right where he is now. Must have just a hint of the wrong angle going towards the six here because he's taking a moment to see if there's something else he can do. If he could play the five back into the side and just use the seven ball to slow the cue ball down a little bit if he didn't get straight in on it. But I think drawing the ball to six is not in the way. I think he can come straight back right where he is now. Well, that's the way he's queuing up. No, you were right. Look at this. Well, it, it was just a matter of he would have had to cheat the pocket maybe, and so he chose this. It's not it a bad is, option. But it's, it's a little tricky. Well, he put the seven in a better place. <laughs> That's probably why he went that way. Yeah, this would be a pretty classy run out here. Hmm. Well, the way they're sitting, you could play the eight in the far corner. Right. And when I say the way they're sitting, when you don't have nothing to do to get to the nine from the eight, you can do this. Good call there, Danny. That's the smart way. Conservative, very little cue ball movement. He, he knows he figures to make the eight, no problem. So just take what you have. Don't force it. Don't get out of line trying to play position when you could have this shot to begin with. I think he's going to be on the rail or close to it. Yeah, and that's why he moves the cue ball up near the side pocket, give himself a little bit more cue ball to hit rather than be right on the rail. Good play. Yeah, he has great knowledge. Besides all the physical ability, he's got real knowledge. Attention to detail, the subtleties of the sport. And that puts Van Boning on nine games now. And that was a big rack to win. He had to do a little something to get it. It was not just a connect the dots type of run out. 9-5 is our score.
Zamboni's powerful brake on display, one on the side. It's compliant. He has a shot on the two. Pretty open layout here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Mika has any hope to get a shot this rack. Yeah, right now, it looks like the only place that he could possibly falter would just be on this opening shot. He hits this good. It sets up the rest of the rack. Yeah, he can get pretty good here. Yeah, we'd hate to bet against him, that's for sure. Good shot. Well, he's another one of those players like Efren. Whatever they decide, you know it's right. Yeah. Yeah. He recognizes when there's a little bit of a testy time, and he stops and ensures his thought process that that's what he wants to settle for. He got the perfect angle to get from the four to the five. This is interesting. I don't think he wants to play from down on the end rail if he can help it. I think he'd rather have the uh, on the high side. But then he went down and looked like he wanted to play from the end rail here. So we'll see. If you go from the end rail, the eight ball can be a little bit of an obstruction, but that's what he wants. He's got a pretty good angle. But I'm just saying the eight ball here is. Yeah, you're right, be, but he's going to miss the eight. Yeah, because he, he went. He got perfect. He went and looked at this, and that's what he wanted, so I guess he's just going to use draw. Yeah, and the just draw bend is it. going towards the eight. I mean, the nine ball, which he would like. Oh, he miscued. Was that what happened there? Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, he didn't like it after he got there. I could see because he kind of flinched his body. I don't know if we could get the replay, but yeah, now Mika. He, he got good on it. I don't know stop why. Stop shot he... safety. Okay. Now watch Let's the, the watch replay. the watch the cueing here. Watch that cue swish to the side. And then Mika puts the killer safe on him. Pin the cue ball to the eight. Tough hit here. Try to kick three cushions. He, oh, hit, he it. hit it. And look oh, at this. Boy. Look at this. Oh, Couldn't if it doesn't did scratch. It better with his oh, finger. my. Oh, my. This will not do anything for Mika's good humor, I can tell you right now. <laughs> this is not going to make him more pleasant. <laughs> well, yeah. Mika right now is feeling sorry for himself because I think that was a lot of luck involved there. A little snake bit. Yeah, they hit it one thing, but they absolutely lock him up in this fashion. Well, he hit the paint on yeah. the ball. And that's what Mika would need to hit to pocket the five and with very little hope of getting position. Oh, How he didn't hit it. Even he's hitting it. No, he's completely frustrated. Lest the table know it. Well, Shane can get to where you always say. One ball away from the hill. Yeah, this game will put him on the hill. No, one away from the hill. Well, that's where he's at now. He's on nine. This will put him on ten. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm looking at it badly. Oh, uh, what? Give himself a little more angle, and he, he smiles. He knows he didn't do that right. <laughs> well, the thing about it is you didn't get perfect, but just don't miss now. Those are good words to say, but doing it's another thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're trying to pay the rent. Uh, 
Okay, good shot there. Connected. Put himself back in line. This is to get on the hill at 10 games. Yeah. Ten five is our score. A severely damaging blow to the psyche of Mika Eminen. That was quite a kick there where he just rubbed the object ball. And it has to be disappointing and frustrating both. Well, you know, Mika, he won the tournament with one loss a, a while back, so you know he's not quitting. No, oh, he's a threat from anywhere. Dangerous even in this match. Final break of the match here for Van Boning. Where's the cue ball going? Oh, well, uh, it didn't go in the pocket. For which he's delighted. He doesn't have a good shot, but at least he has a chance to defend himself from here. He made two balls. That's why it's a compliant break. Doesn't have much to do here. Gonna push out. Well, I don't envision Mika accepting this push out. No, he's gonna try to back cut the three, I guess. Oh, bad idea. No, he's not gonna back cut it, he's gonna play safe. Good idea. And he, he made a good save. Shane's going to try another one of these jump cue safeties. Well, it didn't work that well this time. Mika does have a shot. Good stroke there. Certainly when the match gets to this score, sometimes you see some kind of fun things because Eminem knows that any misfortune or misplay by him will result in a match loss, but it's also somewhat freeing now because you know you have to make something happen, so there's you don't have that ambiguity of decision-making or angst over your decision. You just have to go. And sometimes you'll see some great runouts from here and tremendous comebacks. It's much yeah. like the uh, two-minute offense in football. Yeah, he needs six games. <laughs> Shane needs one. 
But, you know, mentally he's thinking he could do it, and he could. Yeah, just by that uh, safety, that was not desperation time. That was the guy playing the win a rack. He's won two games by virtue of his safety play in the set. Well, he's still a dangerous man. 10-6 now is our score. Okay, and then now breaking here. Break 17. One in the side. Another ball went in, so we have a compliant break. Is he going to get a shot? He expanded his arms as if to say, help me. I think he did get some kind of a shot, not an easy shot at all. Now yeah. we're going to be looking at a safe. Well, he's looking at go time here. Going to try to make a shot here, cut that two in. Yeah, he'll get rewarded if he makes it. He didn't make it. Is he going to get safe back? Well, he's going to leave it somewhat tough, but it is a makeable shot. Super thin cut. And like you said, he did get rewarded. The cue ball uh, arrived in a place where he could have made the three. Continued on his way. Well, the two was a tough shot, but... Yep. You gotta make it to win tournaments. The two is still a tough shot here for Shane. He's looking yeah. going up and yeah, down. I'd hate to be betting he doesn't make it. <laughs> I think he's gonna get out, but the position is gonna be tricky because of the seven ball. Looking to go straight up and down the table here to back to the center. Yeah. Then cut. He's gonna make this. No, he's not. Look at this. Did he make the nine? No. Well, Mika, you're in the match yet. Got the right angle to go to the three in the side. Inside placement to allow the cue ball to go straight across the table as he back cuts the eight. No, he went to get in the side. Three cushions around then. Yeah, he's okay. Good speed. <laughs> and Eminem now only four games away from... Winning this match, he's not trails done yet. Seven ten. <clears throat> he 
Yeah, there it is. Look at the TPA. Imminence ahead. But the all-important score is he's three behind. One in the side, eight, eight in the side. Yeah. None compliant, I think. No, no, two balls oh, he went did. in. He made yeah. two balls, yeah. I think well, then the two balls go through there, too. Yeah. Oh, he was waving his hands that he didn't get a shot on the yeah. two in the four. He was trying to let you know, Danny, he didn't have a good shot. Well, he's got a safety here. And a good one. Ooh. Good shot. Yeah, that was good. But the two stop where it's kickable to make. The nine's a little bit in the way, so he'd have to warp oh, it with the inside. The or no, no he's he going to expand it. This. No, he cut it too thin. <laughs> yeah, hard <laughs> to be critical of that. It was a good effort. Yeah, but look at this shot. Oh, I know it. Tough to get to the three from the two. got to tell you, Mika loves to have the monster draw stroke on display, so... Well, he needs the monster draw stroke. Yep. Still might not be good enough. He's, yeah, he's looking at rail first. I don't know if rail first will get you there. Unless he rail first and draw it. Which makes the pocket very unforgiving. I think he's looking yeah. at high left and take his chances to filter the cue ball the other side. Oh, not yeah. enough giddy up. I didn't think he could get there that way. Didn't have a good way to get there. Now he's going to kick the three at the side. Down table. Yeah, down table. Good shot. Too hard. Yeah, he sold he, out. You know, he, he could have chose a different pace there because he has to know when he hits it that hard if he hits it because he hit it in the exact right place. I guess he wasn't anticipating hitting it that well. Anyway, Shane loves it. Open pocket here for the three. Smoothed it home, and now he's off to the races here to close out the match. Yeah, there's not much hope. Shane's very good at running five. <laughs> Got the right angle. Two balls away now. And this is match ball. Yeah, Van Boning moving on in the winner's bracket. I think the pivotal moment really it, it occurred in rack 10. When, you remember that run out that Shane made where he had to draw back and go between the two balls and then stun around <laughs> and three rails? And it was amazing. So Yeah, he's an amazing player. Another great match, and we want to thank everybody for joining us today. And now let's go to Raw Hanna down on the floor with our winner, Shane Van Boning. 
All right, Rahan alive at the Action Stats Simonis Aramith Arena, standing here with America's Best Hope SVB Shane Van Boney. How you doing, Shane? Well, I'm doing pretty good. All right, you seem like you didn't really have your patented break working. How'd you work through that rack? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta figure some things out. You know, it's just, you know, different than before. So, I mean. Okay, so when when you do do that, what do, what do you do? What what does it mean to you when you go back to the drawing board? How do you figure it out? Because if you can't figure it out, nobody can. I mean, I got work to do, so that's all I can say. <laughs> all right, this is SVB Raw Hannah. Look forward to a big match coming up. I'm gonna bet my house on you, Shane. Yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to it. There we go. Accu stats, we're out.